at the time with the with the with the MC thing, it was harder to break through back then. Like it was so going back to the point what you said, like in helping other artists come through and give them a voice, like because no one gave me that voice when mm. I was back then. I had to I was getting water dashed over me, like I was coming tearing it up raves, but man weren't giving me. You know, they had a certain amount of MCs that was on there and I weren't breaking into that circle. Mm. I had to kind of break through. How did you break through? Um, the Killer Keller b- 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 podcast. Killer Keller official dot com. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo. Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NoPolandRecords.com. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. It's in the legendary. All right, let's do it. They call me Shabba, deliver call Dapper Whatever the mic idea, what the matter Don't bust left, don't bust copper My upper set it proper, you a bad boy, you a top notch Well it's a jungle swing it here, pop here what? It's about to get hot here what? It's about to go pop Enough of them are gone like a dapper but they're not And the things ever stop, 24-7 around the clock rock Now who's gonna make your body rock? I'm a jawbreaker, on this thing I get more paper Watch the way I get raw later, sticking numbers and more data More life, more labour, pure style, enough flavour Execute that demonstrator, microphone, elevator Look now, tell you later, foot down, accelerator Murder race to the exterminator, drum and bass, terminator Woo! Oh, Jeez! Yeah man, we caught it, we caught it We caught the wave, we literally <laughs> just walked in and jumped in. Ladies and gentlemen Hold tight, everybody. All the regulars, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, Central London, or as central as you need to be, could be, want to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. Big shout out to the regulars, hold tight, graffitikings.co.uk. Big shout out to strainstation.co.uk, and of course, nopolandrecords.com. If you've got the television app, you know what time it is. It's free. Download street culture for your sins, everything in the sport of art, and more from graph to DJ mixes to the works is there. Wow, inside the place, those sultry tones do not come from a regular man with a history longer than the cables of the microphones that he's been on tour with for decades. This is by no means a regular podcast. This is with a legacy holder, a sheer... I mean, my fanboy's on fucking flick. S-A-S-A-S-A-S. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Big up, man. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, man. It's been, it's, been, it's been a... What, what can I say? It's been a... It's just an amazing venture, man. The whole, the whole way, you know. It's been, there's been up and downs, but yeah, I'm just like I said to you earlier. I'm grateful to be here, still doing what I love doing, um, you know, regenerating, just watching the music grow, watching everything just blossom. I love it. And Do you know blossoming what I mean? it is. Yeah. I, I think, I think that with there with some artists like we're just jumping straight in, but yeah, like, yeah, we ain't fucking around. Straight in, straight yeah. We got 45 minutes on the clock now, fucking around. Yeah, bro, you're the okay sign. Yeah. There's a few people out there yeah. that the older you guys progress in the culture and f- yeah. and flag it, yeah. the more I think it is for a lot of people that they they just they just know that they're going to be all right as well. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've created such a history. Yeah. Um, and and one in which I don't think can ever be. It, it it can never falter. It feels like you're at this place right now where you're easy. You know that yeah. you're easy, easy rolling. Yeah. You know, we're probably yeah. over a few years and years and years of, yeah. of incline. It was probably quite hard, but now you're in this beautiful place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I like, like to be fair. Like, life is a journey, isn't it? And it's like, you know, we all go through <laughs> ups and downs in life. Do you know what I mean? And um, like, yeah, like I've, I'm, I'm a family man. I'm an older man now. I kind of grew with the music as a kid. Mm-hmm. Since I was 13, I was on pirate radio, I was doing this, um, Crazy. you know, just just a hobby, just mm. something I loved doing when I was going to school. And I just got involved in it and, you know, I stuck to it. And there was times, don't get me wrong, like, you know, I've never had a normal job, like a nine to five, probably one job ever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I'm grateful for that, that I've done music, like, you know, most of my whole life. So mm. um, it's been an amazing venture. And like I said, it's, it, what it looks like from the outside as well, um, there's always different things going on in, on the, in the back end, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I just tried to, I said it to a man today, I was having a conversation with a man on the phone and I was like, I've always been a man about that like, building bridges and not burning them. And that is very, it's easy said, but in this game, it's very hard to please everybody. 
and do mm. what you're doing. And like I said, grateful is the word, and just yeah, just blessed as well. Like to be do, had to do something so many years down the line, mm. um, and still entertain people, and still have my 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 fan base from back then as well. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like that's 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 a blessing more than anything. Like for real, for because real. Because the new artists that come through, and a lot of the new guys, like, and a lot of the new ravers as well. They don't. What we did before the internet was was almost like the foundation being built, do you know what I mean? And a lot of that, yeah, there's things on the internet that was, you know, shown from back then, clips and whatever, but not the whole thing w weren't documented, do you know It's what impossible. I mean? it's yeah, it's that's impossible. what I'm saying. So there's that side of it, what people don't know. And, you know, even for now, like looking back and doing these things here, like these podcasts and things, it gets, for me, a chance to to tell my story as well, mm. do you get what I mean? Because like, there's so much in-betweens and you're just caught in this, you're just on the go all the time. All the time, you know right? I mean? you and you don't no have time. time. Yeah. Look, look at us, man. We've been trying to do this for months and, you know, the whole thing. You know, <laughs> no, so we, no, we just put the call in and it just yeah, happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, seriously, I've it's been long time, like, man, I've kind of been in a stage in my life where I'm just doing different things as well, like progressing in other, other fields, you know what I mean? So it's just been my, my time is kind of always been like when I want to do things, I do things. But now I've got schedule and routine. Mm. I'm with, a, I'm with a, like a... A very like you know intelligent woman as well. I'm blessed mm. for that. So she's just helped me structure Always. my life. And, and this has I mean? been a real shift yeah. in a, a seismic shift in the way that you approach day to day runnings. Yeah, and day to day right? runnings. And and yeah. before it was just kind of freestyle and just do when what I want when I want really. But that that's gone a long time. That mentality is like nah, it's different things to. Uh, to strive for mm. different goals where before you just think that when you've done certain things, you've made it or you've, you know what I mean? I've never mm. had that anywhere. I've always thought that I could always do better. Mm. And I'm a bit lazy sometimes, but yeah, I've kind of got out of that mode and, mm. and, and there's no time for that now. Like yeah, yeah. Life takes over and then you still got your business and your work to, yeah. it's a balance. That's the word I'm looking for. Balance is important. It's important. For real. Sorry to lower the uh, intellectual properties of this conversation at this point, but yeah. I have to ask. Because this is what people are going to want to know. Yeah, yeah, go on. Because go on, sorry, you're... I'll just two on, two fucking words. Peter Pan, all yeah, right? Yeah. You are just uh, ageless. I don't know what you've been yeah. eating in the mornings these days, but I'll tell you something. When you talk about your fan base, actually, yeah. when you talk about your fan base, they are like rabid responses to you. Mm. How often do you get recognised in the street? Bruv, that is such a weird question because I just come out of the station... I ain't gonna say where I am, but I just come out the station and I was walking down the road and a man just what well, a builder, two builders are walking. Obviously, I've got my glasses on and I've got my, my tracksuit on. on I don't really, Tell me like, what they shabba, said. Shabba, shabba, shabba. <laughs> like, oh, can I get a picture? Like, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> like that just makes me feel like and in West I like, moved to South West London mm. and like obviously from East London, I know a lot of people, and there's a lot of people that's moved out in, vice versa, out, mm. in out. Um, but when I come to South West, I see so like many people on the road just tooting me, and it's mm. good because you know, there's times where, you know, like, image-wise as well, like, that's very important as well in this mm. game, image. I, like, I kind of just changed my image a little bit and I have two... I used to wear a cap a lot and I don't really wear a cap a lot, do you know what I mean? Like, on stage, mm. I probably wear a cap just to keep the water out of my eyes, but mm. I don't really wear caps again, which I was wearing that, and that could change your image as well. Yeah, that's so true, that's true. trying to build that image where, you know, just being, being who I am, being me, I suppose. Like, I'm not saying mm. wearing a cap is not me, but I suppose, like, it makes you look younger. There's certain things as well, do you know what I mean, that mm. you could do. I mean, I just probably got good genes in it in my family. Mm. Like, I don't... I've had times in my life where I've done this and done that and not, you know, stress as well can, can make you, uh, you know, look look not, not well and not healthy. Mm. And where I'm at in my life at the moment, like, obviously... I've been building on that, and that's that. That shows as well. I think. Do you know mm, what I mean? Yeah, that, for that sure. That shows people notice that it's good when people say, "Oh, you look well," or "You're doing this and you're yeah. doing that." Like you don't, you don't strive for that for people to say that, but you kind of if it it helps when yeah, people say, to you, "Oh, I ain't seen you for a little while." Yeah. You know, you're looking all right. You know, we're here because we all go through it, man. Do you know mm. what I mean? We all go through it, and sometimes you could take your eye off the ball and not be looking after yourself as well. Do you know what I mean? I Is that the back end sort of thing? Because you mentioned the back end before and what goes on on a real day to day. Um, some artists will attest that um, it, to be it on a regular, it, it, it's the reality is very different from the yeah. guy you see on stage, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, you, like, there was times, there's loads of times through my career where I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just going, basically, I'm just living for the weekends, bro. Mm. And I think that the week is just like, hurry up. I just hurry up and get to the weekend <laughs> because I'm on tour and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And not, not even that, just time to, so it'd be a lot of time that, 
if you're not doing the right things and you're not looking after yourself and you'll be sleeping in a day and doing all mm. the shit here, this is what catches up with you. And then when the weekend comes, you're all right, you can do your things. But then Monday to Friday, you're not doing nothing. It's like, what's the point? Do you get what I mean? And then there's other sides to the music. When you get older, you get wiser, they say, you know what I mean? And you've got to build for certain other things. And I've got family, I've got children, I've got... You know, I've got a new missus and, and, you know what I'm saying, I'm moving on and that's so you how got it children? is. you got children? Yeah, I've got four children, yeah. Awesome, awesome. And, and I've got a stepdaughter as well, yeah. Lovely. So, yeah, well, two yeah. of them have grown up and then the other three are kind of, yeah, below ten. But, yeah, I mean, like, I'm a family man as well and, and, and that's that's one more thing we were just saying before the, mm. uh, the car started and, you know, it's, it's important for you happy to be happy at home as well because... Mm. I find there's a lot of escapism and people escaping, doing this, doing that, trying to get away from mm. what's reality. And if reality is all right for you, like mm. every day, then everything else should fall into place. Should it fall should, into place. Yeah, I that's mean, the theory. there's always ups and downs and there's always, mm. in the music industry, there's always stress and pressure, do you know what I mean? And, mm. and, and, and you know, to deliver and there's new guys coming through, man's got to be on their toes and always been on the game. Oh, and, yeah. Do you know what I mean? As they, an MC as well, like a lot of people, you're in a spotlight. So it's how you deal with it, I suppose. Yeah, it is, it's, isn't it? It's very like how you deal with yourself and every day. Speaking of family, uh, there is the um, urban myth that your pops was something incorporated with the punk era. Yes. Let's it was, just get into it, that. It was, quickly, briefly, it was... Um, it was kind of like the roadie, the tour manager for the Sex Pistols. Hmm. So his best mate was like flatmate was Paul Cook and Steve Jones, and he helped Steve back in the day. Do you know what I mean? Like he had some drug problems, and he and my dad got him off of that. And then now he's like a you know he's well famous. He lives in Hollywood, and he's yeah. Steve Jones. Does a radio show, isn't it? Yeah, he does. That's right. He does a radio show, and he's mm. got like you know Russell Brand and all these guys coming on there, and all these Too celebrities. Casual. Yeah, Too he's casual just for us, he's just cool. Like yeah. I met him as it goes. I was on tour with him in Japan in 2004. Um, and I was in a in a punk band myself, and I got involved in that through my old man as well. So okay, hold on, stop. <laughs> this is uh, it's about yeah. to get interesting. So you were in a punk band yeah, as well. Yeah, I was in a punk band. There's actually footage on YouTube. Um, there's loads of stuff. You'll see me dressing up in some weird stuff, and I actually did Fucking it. get it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yes. it's like um, Love Zilch, it. Firewire. We did a tour of Japan, sixteen cities must burn, and it was like all like celebrities. Like we had like. Um, Duffy from Guns N' Roses, like, uh, we tried to get Eminem at the time, but Eminem blew up. He just got signed by Dre, and we was trying to get artists. So we got, they got Cypress Hill, and they got, like, Little Kim, and they got a couple rappers, and they done a concoction of artists, basically, and formed this band, yeah. which was on the back end of a celebrity in Japan that... Um, unfortunately, like committed suicide, but he was wow. like a Michael Jackson out there. Wow! So when he passed away, like there was like fifty thousand people at his funeral. He was massive. His name was Hide. You can check out the footage on YouTube or whatever. Um, and yeah, so uh, they, they, the guy that produced our band and put it together, he basically was used to um, produce Simple Minds. Oh and, shit! And um, so it was big names involved, and then he he put this concoction together and finished off Hide's album, which only had eight tracks on it, and we did the other eight tracks. So we and then we went and toured it. It was like with proper like with Sony and Avex mm. and that. So it was a good experience. Japan do it differently as well. I mean, like, we I was back on forward. I was recording in studios with Rod Stewart. I met Cypress Hill on my birthday. Ice T. Not today. Yeah, yeah, not today, yeah, like, mate. Like, 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 <laughs> it's so I was just, amazing. I stayed in Hollywood. I, you know, what I mean, I did that when I, I was twenty one and. All the band members were like 40, 45 rock stars. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, I don't know if you've been to America, but like in America, most of the guys over there that are the real superstars, like and live in the real luxury houses, mm -hmm. are like rock stars or music music guys real from rock different, stars, yeah, yeah, like yeah. guitar players and drummers and mm -hmm. like celebrities over there. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Like, um, but yeah, I mean that was a whole experience for me. weren't really feeling the the back end of the. What, what it brought because like it was very satanic and very like um very dark and mm. like you know like the punk thing can get really like that like yeah. the rock and all that like i don't know rock and punk is two different things but it can yeah. get really they were smashing up equipment on stage and that was cool yeah. but then when man started cutting themselves with records yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, doing yeah. some mad shit i was like Phew. yeah 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 you know like but i was <laughs> yeah. young i was 21 and it was like an experience for me so i did that for five years five back on years. back on wow. back and forward still doing my drum and bass and jungle at the time um, and then yeah I kind of had a, they wanted to sign me as well for a solo thing and, and I had to move to Japan for a year but I kind of was getting homesick when I was over there for six months and I loved what I was doing over here it was starting to take off as well mm. so it was, a, it was a hard decision for me and it was more like the environment was good but it was the people around me and it was kind of a bit, a bit scary mm. do you know what I mean at the time to leave my family and do all that and I just had a son and 
Do you know what I mean? It was mm. one of them ones. So I had to make a decision and I carried on doing this thing and kept the, kept the links over there, but still just moved on and just done my jungle and my MC and I just loved it. Like, dude, you're up to 50 from the moment you started. Like, dude, how did you... To the civilians out there listening, yeah. do you know what I mean? This sounds like synergy working in crazy ways and you just inviting right places at right times. Yeah, yeah. It sounds, it sounds really... F- far gone to yeah. a lot of people. Explain, explain how, how did these things actually come to fruition? How, do, how do you go from punk to drum and bass and then both popping up at the same yeah, time? I mean, that's a lot. Isn't the it? punk thing was taking me that way, and then because like no one, this was unseen. Like at the time in England, no one ever knew I was on tour. Like no one, if you was in Japan, you would have known or in that world there. Like in LA, and but you were keeping America. things very separate. I was just keeping things separate. I was making wow. it work, but I had to fly out, and then was flying back and forward, and I was away for six months on tour. So it was like, when I'd done that and I'd done recording, and the guys was like, I just said, I just had literally my son was just born, he was six months, and I was like, you know, I can't just leave my family. He was like, bring them with you, and they paid for my family to come too. Like Malta, wow. we recorded in Malta and some big like mansion house, and then went to LA, stayed over there for two weeks. Like I flew my son over there and. Yeah, like it was crazy, um, but it was an experience for me. And then, like, I suppose Jungle and Shab, MC Shabba was still popping, but it was still getting to that stage. Like, if you look at MC Convention, that started mm. just after that. So it was yeah. like I knew yeah. in my heart, like I wanted to do something. Yeah, and I, like I was on the verge of doing it, but I didn't know what it was gonna be. Like I'd just mm. been MCing for ten years or whatever, mm. or longer than that. Like, yeah, probably about t- f- since nineteen ninety, like ninety one. So this was 2002, three. Mm. Then I'd kind of just, we started convention and then the rest was history, do you know what mm. I mean? Yeah, like for the... Mm. So 90, yeah, early 90s. I mean, that's how I remember you on the mixtapes. So many mixtapes. Yeah, Pirate Radio was just a, it was a thing where I, I grew up in an estate, Nightingale Estate in, in Hackney. And, um, you know, my next door neighbours, like my nan's next door neighbour, Jason, was, was one of the main guys, um, Miley that, you know, started Weekend Rush and, and, um, and Defection and, you know, Dyson was mm. like, he lived upstairs from us in the tower block. So it was all people I knew. Mm. And then, like, you know, I didn't understand it. And then we used to play football matches on the estate, like the, the ragga lot versus the, the hardcore lot That's at the time. That's great. And I, did, and I was into ragga, but I was, the hardcore lot was my mates. And it was like, what, what team am I going to, you know? Yeah. I knew all the, on all the other guys as well. And there was, the, you know, they were my street friends or whatever, my school Probably friends. in the wind. Just so I just kind of used to play for both teams. like, And I was a good player, innit? So people was like, oh, yeah, I play for this team. And anyway, we just, we just one thing learned to another. And then I remember Pirate Radio was so powerful. Mm. It was almost like, if you visual, like when MTV come out with a visual thing, that's how Pirate Radio was for the sound. Mm. Like back in the days, like there was one station, if your name got shouted on that station, the next day in school, you're a celebrity. Like it was no joke. Like people used to call my name out, like they used to call me Shabba Burton. Yeah, and it was like my second name. And it's because when I come back from, I went to Jamaica, I think it was like 90, yeah, 1990. And then when I come back, I think Shabba Ranks was the most popular thing. And everyone was just like, Shabba, Shabba, because I was. I had a suntan, I went yard, you know what I mean? I come back and I was like, rah, like, and it just stuck with me. I had a different name at school and then this name stuck with me and then I used to get bigged up on the radio station. So it's been your name forever? Yeah, for, they, they, that just got labelled in my state. I think man was just like a, like a piss take at first, like, yeah, shabba, shabba. And it was just like, rah, and then like, I, I could MC, you know, like, obviously, like, I was always into music, like, on the way to school, I'd be rapping and... I used to play football or like my 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 more hip hop rapper. No, hip-hop. like more like just like like man tapping on the block and yeah, just yeah, rapping yeah. to the beat. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a ragga style. Nice. I was into ragga. I grew up sound systems and ragga. So like there was man that used to do bars and all mm. that and whatever. But uh, mine was like a ragga. I grew up on inspirations like Bounty Killer, Papa San. Come on. You know what I mean? Lieutenant Stitchy, like mm. all that style. I loved all that growing up. So. You know, I just wanted to do that and I was quite good and like in my estate there was like a little reggae sound. I used to go and watch them at some house oh, things man, and that. Oh man, you were lucky. That sounds yeah, sick. That's what I mean. Like, and like <laughs> I was right in the mix of it all and then the pirate radio, when I went to school, I got so much reaction from my name being shouted out, like Shabba. Shabba, Shabba and it was like everyone, everyone in, my, in my school was like, right, was that you that was talking about? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then, I actually got up the station and I thought I could mix and I couldn't mix. I didn't know what I was doing. But they used to leave me up the station. Like, obviously, I was part of the little 
thing and I stop like bunk mm. school and shit and go up there <laughs> and do you know what I mean my mum would yeah. wouldn't even know I was up the station and then you know and hey, it could be worse places one, one sure. thing one thing led up to another and they was going out raving like Plumps did Nathan Way and Roller Express and I'd oh, be in the studio South, for 12 yeah. hours yeah. and I'd answer the phones I loved it man I loved it like people just, and then like it was such a buzz do you know what I mean I can't mm. even explain it and then yeah, I just started just like doing that because it's all about your voice, like what your voice sounded like. It wasn't about lyrics back in the day. Like there was MCs like Hardcore General, you know, mm. Top Bars, and then people there. They're top different. Bars. Yeah, like different. It was yeah, different. different. It? Like it was a different mm. vibe. Like mm. they had little punchlines, and mm. it was more like talking Hardcore General. So it was a voice thing. And Miley, Miley was one of the best MCs back in the day on Rush because he had he had this Cockney slang and he used to just rhyme and he used to rhyme but talk. Mm. And it was wicked at the raves where everyone's buzzing or whatever back in the day. Like, it was like, that was the main thing. It Did wasn't you? about the MCs, you know what I mean? It was yeah. different vibe back then. So anyway, I got into it. I loved it. And then I started answering the phones and my voice was clear. It's always been clear. So mm. I had a blessing. It was like, yeah, you're good, you know, you should do a little show. And I'd done a little show. And then one thing led to another, man. Like, I just started, I remember my first booking was that like, I think it was like Astoria, uh, Busby's next door. Mm. I got like, a, I got it, the rave was called Outrage, I'll never forget it. It was like my first proper booking, like the guy's like, yeah, I want to get you on there, like 50 quid. And I was like, oh, mate. I'm in. Like, that was like five <laughs> yeah. grand for me at the time. <laughs> yeah. You don't understand, like, back then, like to get that, like paid for something you love, and that was like big money. Yeah, ain't 50 quid like, like now. No, nah, that back... was probably like 500 quid back then. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, like I couldn't believe it. And went to this rave, and I remember it was like Stevie Hyper, rap, MCMC, like, you know, like Randall, all these, all the big boys, you know what I mean, back then. Sick. And I was like, oh my God, like I've been raving. What am I doing here? Yeah, yeah what yeah. am I doing? And I got to do Crazy. that and that was sick. And then I got a residency at Telepathy and then morning after and I had little things going mm. on. Um, and then it, it just went through. Yeah, like, I, like the whole thing going up. I remember the big move for me was getting on Jungle Fever Agency because that mm. was another big thing. So shout out to the Cool FM lot and yeah. Eastman and those guys there because mm. When I moved from being like nobody onto that first agency, that gave me the lift to go to Germany, Europe, Canada, all these places I was going. Um, people was recognizing me. I went to Carnival, Mash Up Carnival. And then the next day I was getting calls from people saying, oh, this guy wants to book you in America. This guy was here from Canada. And I was just like, well. Different went, time back then for that shit, man. that was. Yeah. And I different went, time. Yeah, I went Crazy. To, I went to Canada and that was, bruv, what opened doors over there. Like I've Canada just, always loved the DMB, didn't it? And even now, like I'm getting, doing a show in August, I ain't been back there for three years. Um, and we're opening doors over there. But I used to go back there four, four or five times a year, but mm. since 99. So that was big things over there because we was going over there and doing them festivals mm. and we mm. weren't seeing them. Like what we're seeing now in this country, like we was doing that to early 2000s mm. over there. It's massive for events, like 40, 40,000, you know, 20,000 people you know, into drums or 10,000 people. It's like, you ain't never seen nothing like that. Do well, you know this what I mean? is the thing, like, when we talk about Shabba and the legacy, it, you know, we see these, you know, dusty videos on YouTube of yeah. just, oh, I can't, you, you lose count of how many yeah. videos, let alone how many yeah. people are in each video, and you know yeah. it's a scene. It ain't just like, some of them are the same people going to the raves, yeah. but they're just in their droves. And yeah. one thing that I think holds, you hold the, the greatest crown to yeah. is, you gave a lot of um, artists, a lot of people that were just trying to get through the door a yeah. voice because yeah. you were the first of your kind. And when you talk about pitch and frequency and how your voice cuts yeah. through, nothing else was like it at yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I think I think because when I was coming through, like, like it weren't really a colour thing, you can't really mend, but back in the day it kind of was because there weren't really a lot of white MCs. No, it like, wasn't. you know, like colour's not really a thing, it doesn't matter what colour you are, yeah. but back then it, it kind of did. Like, you, so had to, I, you had to really I was kind of like, yeah, there was only one other white yeah. guy I was aware of, like there was that Dominique from Jamaica that was doing his thing over mm. there at the time and there was like a guy called Bod from East London, he was smashing up all the ragga mm. raves, he was tearing it up, like he was one of the mm. sickest artists and I was like, Rah, like that, that's sick, I mm. used to go and watch them, like, mm. um, you know, there was Coxon and, and Unity course, parties yeah. and all them things. That I used to go there to the parks and watch these guys smash it up. And I was like, yeah, I want to do that. I love... Because I always grew up on the sound system thing, like, from Jamaica, the way they entertain on, mm. on, on stage. Like, I, I weren't really into, like, 
like later on, yeah, I might have been into like sound clashes like with DJs and that, but I was more into like, you know, like man versus each other mm. on stage and all that shit there. I was mm. like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I want to, the way they perform and the crowd's just like, yeah. that's that's where it come from. Crazy. So at the time with the, with the with the MC thing, it was harder to break through back then. Like it was so, going back to the point, what you said, like in helping other artists come through and give them a voice, like, because no one gave me that voice. When mm. I was back then, I, had to, I was getting water dashed over me. Like I was coming and tearing it up raves, but man weren't giving me, you know, they had certain amount of MCs that was on there and I weren't breaking into that circle. Mm. I had to kind of break through. How did you break through? Um, I think my resident, my residency at like telepathy, like, cause telepathy was massive and it got big. And then like at first it was just club telepathy and this and that. But when they started doing a Drellian village and ramming it and doing all these things and mm. I was resident there as well. So I kind of grew with that. Um, and yeah, like knowing the, them promoters and I think through the radio, the pirate radio definitely blew me up because even now, people like artists, you know, there's a amount of artists who say, but I used to listen to your tapes, brother. Yeah, you don't understand, yeah. it's to put like, I'll make sure Sunday night, I mean, yeah. and not just me, other artists as well, like they had a, a list of artists. So when I moved to Cool FM as well, it was another big era for me, like that was like 96, mm. 97, because I stuck, I was Weekend Rush, so I was loyal, like I stuck Weekend Rush out right to the end, till it went to Kick FM. And like, you know, like it's like Tottenham Arsenal if you're on call and there's Rush here. So <laughs> yeah. we used to all meet up on the estate and have like coffees and we knew each other and all that. But it was so, so much rivalry. <laughs> but... <laughs> like, man, then we'll be watching this and laughing now because they know back in the day. Like, Comment below, you know you yeah, are. Yeah, <laughs> like it was so much rivalry and there was that like, man digging out online. And it was, but the next day it was all jokes, but online it was so much rivalry. And then I mm. kind of just to be asked to go and call FM. Um, you know, back Mad. then as well by Smurf and Eastman was a big thing because Core cool was massive, do you know what I mean? And Shocked they they done things properly. All them guys back in the day. Yeah. Wow. So that was a... Uh, um, shout out to the Weekend Rush crew as well. It's good to see them lock back as well. They come back like with a little thing and they're doing their internet radio station. So yeah, big up all That's those guys. Sick. Yeah, big up. That's I mean, awesome. that was amazing for yeah. me. And then letting the MCs through has always been something that I love doing because... I just believe, like, if, I've, if I'm at the top of the hill, why would I want to be there on my own? I want to bring people through. I want to open the door. Well, so. this opens the door to the MTC convention. Yeah. And if you were anywhere where you were supposed to be in the late 90s, early noughties, you would see, and I could only remember these neon pink um, fly posts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of them had your face on. Yeah, yeah, skiver, big up yeah. Skiver, rest in peace Skiver. Yeah, rest in peace. Um, and because we are getting into some Skiver territory yeah. right now. Uh, and <laughs> neon signs, every single lamppost. Yeah. You guys were deadly serious about it. Because uh, I yeah. got the impression, and fuff a bit for me, because I'm just the humble beatboxer of its time, but uh, I was a big MC fan. Yeah. And uh, th there was always this kind of um, friction between the DJs and MCs to have like one singular event yeah. that was about MCs. You guys were way ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that was it. I mean, it was getting to the stage when we was doing parties and not us, but particular, but certain DJs was like locking off the mics and mm. you know they turning the mics down and they they wanted the MC for themselves and it was happening back then. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and then we just we just decided, yeah, like I had a plan. Um, was going to go to Iron Apple because we had some things going on out there, like a party. I had some, my mate was doing some things and we wanted to bring drum and bass over there because it was a garage and grind place. Mm. So we did that and then we brought a whole heap of artists with us and we was on the beach. And that's when we come up, we come up with MC Convention and then we started the Highly Blessed thing and... Yeah, the rest is history. We did that big party in Stratford Rex. Um, right, fucking, that was the biggest. It. Yeah. We never rammed, heard of it before, MC Convention. It. And then, you know, we took Mad. it all around the country and around the world. And we was doing that and, and was building at the same time. So the music was building and was changing the, you know, the structure of our MCs are on the flyer. And not, not no disrespect to any DJ out there. We love the music. Course, we love yeah. all the DJs. But it was just at the time, the way it was and... We we stamped it. We stamped our authority on it mm. um, and did that. Do you know what I mean? And then, you know, even now, you know, this, this this story just continues, bro, because mm. it just goes from there. And then there was a little gap, and then obviously the later part of of SASAS and the whole thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, you also set like a precedence. This was of a time where you know garage was emerging as well. Yeah. Um, but it, it almost became it almost became uh, reasonably comedic. Because yeah. it also happened in other genres as well. Yeah. You know, 100 MCs, 300 arenas, da, 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 all on the fly. Yeah, yeah, it was just yeah, like, yeah. it actually became humorous. It was yeah, like, oh, yeah. hey, do they really have that many rooms in yeah, this Yeah, I know, it's crazy. I mean, 
the garage thing as well. I mean, like, like I was saying to a guy the other day and we was talking and I just went up to Liverpool on Friday for the Heartless crew. Mm. Oh, and I built some great, yeah, I mean, I built yeah. some great, big up them, man. They're like family to yeah, me. And yeah. it's like, I built some great relationships over the years of doing what I do. Um, and not because I can spit to garage and I can spit to mm. all them other genres and mm. I, I might do a tune here or a tune there, but... I kind of think that jungle and all that, the root of it, because I listen to other music as well and I'm into other things, so I get it. I listen to everything, bruv. Like, yes. I can even listen to house, but not for too long. Like, it may be like a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but with yeah. reggae, I can just listen to it all day and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your go-to. You know? yeah, yeah, it's my go-to. Oh, it's just, wrong, I like the vibes. It's just, I relate to the music, mm. you know? I relate, I come from... I'm always trying to build my life up and up, so I get it. Like, there's some... When your music is a thing where... It's different. It's what, as an artist as well, like it's how you're feeling at the time and mm. and what you're going through. And, mm. and there's a lot of suffering that went man went through in the day. And now it's all like, you know, man. Some artists have made it, and it's wicked because yeah. you watch the growth. And that's what I love. I love the vibes. It's all about vibes for me. Do you uh, do you DJ yourself? Can um, you? DJ? I can DJ, but not really on the new the new decks, the new things. Like I've, yeah. I've had a try of it, but <laughs> give me 12 tens, mm. I'll go mix four decks. Can you imagine Nikki you know trying, I mean? Can you imagine Nikki trying to show you how this? Yeah, Nikki, I know. Like, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I've tried, and I'm doing actually doing a rave coming up um, in September where they've got me to do a DJ set because I've done a few in my career where I've done my own parties and done a, like an exclusive set and That's got all the MCs say. on my set. Yeah. Um, but like, I loved, I loved, we did it just before Skibs passed, where we did like a mix up thing on the radio and it we went down really well. Mm. Um, and we just, yeah, I think the 1210 is old school, you know, vinyl. Yeah. It's wicked. It brings back that vibe. You get me? Yeah. But the new I love things, that shit. I can't, I'm too heavy handed. And when I touch these things, they just go, Brr. but <laughs> someone said to me, like, I'll show you in an hour, you'll get it. But, to be honest, do I really want? I just like I'm old school. Yeah, innit? it's so automatic like, versus manual. It's like if you try, I will you learn. Don't. I suppose I will have to learn. But yeah, I mean, I do. I do it just for fun. Like mm. I'm not, you know. That was another option for me to even start that back then and start a little thing and do that. But for me, it's just fun. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. like I've got other things, other goals, and other things to do. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into the MC side of things because yeah. uh, if there's anybody you want to talk to about MCing, I think we're sitting right <laughs> with him right here. Right, talk to me about. Uh, flow. What do you look for in an MC in terms of flow? In flow, I mean, you can say originality and this and that, but I mean, everything kind of has been done. And I mean, there is original man that just come up with their own shit and all that. But a lot of people listen to other people mm. and then they get their vibe and they, they put it in their way. That's why I love reggae so much. Because reggae, they will take anyone's flow and they'll do it their form. way. Art and it, 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 that's what it is. And that's yeah. what I'll follow. Like, so I've been, some of my lyrics are inspired by other people, but I just change up my and do a Shabba version. Do you mm. know what I mean? And, you know, the vibes, it's vibes is what you listen to. And then you could listen to three different things. And then you listen to that beat or that drum beat and they come up with your mm. little version of it and trying to do your little sing J mm. or melody or, do you know what I mean? But with flows, it's, 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 originality is very hard. But if you hear someone, it's melody, like, I suppose you've got to have the flow, the melody, yeah. and you've got to have the wordplay and everything now. Like, Do you it's think too pitch, fussy. pitch plays a part in it as well? Because if you've got a key in a certain record, you want to complement that by almost staying vocally yeah. in that key range, don't you? Yeah, I mean, that, that's right. Like, all that, all that, like, you know, singing out a note and singing in a... You, you realise that when you're in a studio and you get in real studios and they say, oh, no, you've got to do this, you can't do this like that, and you want to do this. So you learn things. But with me, like... I don't know, like, for what I listen to in other MCs, it's got to be... I've got to relate to it, and then I've got to think, right, that, that was sick. Like, mm. I have to think that to like it. Do you know what I mean? I think not because... Just because he's done a good lyric or he's, you know, he's got a good beat on there, for instance. Like, it's got to be... It's got to be, like, for me, it's got to be catchy. Yeah. Like, it's a catchy thing. I'm a, I'm a catchy man. back again, not when it comes what to hooks, saying. When yeah. it comes to bars, it's a different thing. You can yeah. ask that question about bars, and I'll tell you, oh, you've got to have wordplay, you've got to you break down your lyrics, mm. and you got to, you know, people got to understand you. Do you know what I mean? Uh, at least try to understand you. Like, because if I can't understand you as an MC, as mm. Tom from, or mm. Dave up there going to understand you, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And I'm really good at that, because I... I break down the patois of the yard man and what they're saying and, mm. and everything. So I, I can understand things, you get what I mean? But then if I listen to an MC and I, I can't understand him, mm. he might be spitting too fast or a bit mumbly or... Mm. It has to be clear wordplay, do you get what I mean? Which like, is hard with drummer bass. Like, obviously, yeah. there's the... There's the um... To do it fast and do yeah. that. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? There's the there's the, there's the um, transient of the, the word that you're saying and, and how you articulate that and keep it 
clean, clean on rhythm. Yeah. It's, that's real hard. There's only honest. a few men that can do it really in triple time. Like Storming was one of them. Mm. Uh, shot rest in peace. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, shot rest in peace, Storming. You know what I mean? And Shot was sick at that. Like, you can understand Big up Harry saying, all day. Do you know what I mean? Big up Shots and the man them. And yeah, like, there's only a few men that can do that where you can. Dynamite. Like, Dynamite, yeah. I think, is, is uh, overlooked as well. Yeah, Dynamite's sick, man. He's so versatile. And that's, yeah. that's what I like as well. Versatility. That's, mm. that's what I was looking for. Like, because I'm versatile myself. So. Mm. If I can hear another artist that can do, it's not just about chatting on other genres. It's just about being good on other genres as well, mm. like and just flipping it like it's nothing. Mm. Do you know? Like, like, I'll probably struggle to go on a, a 140 beat for a minute, but give me that for a little bit. Like, give it a couple spins, and I'll have that master. But there's a certain man that could just go. Brr, brr, brr. Do you get what I mean? Mm, and that's that's, yeah. that's, that's that's a talent to look out for as well. That's like something to recognise and. Storming was the king of that, bruv. Like, he'd just mm. fling on any beat and just, you know, like, but, you know, he's, yeah, he's crazy. And no. not just sound all right, sounds sick on it as well. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Skibs as well. Yeah, 100%. Skibs could do that, do you know what I mean? And, and, and that. Two time freestyle. Yeah, that was sick, man. Do you know what I mean? Um, staying on the MC subject, uh, to, a lot of, to a lot of upcoming MCs, yeah. the, the showmanship of, and performance, they, they often get, <laughs> they often slowly dis. Despair, despair between each other and you're left on stage thinking what am I going to say next I've got to say something because yeah, I'm standing yeah. in front of people and I'm getting paid to do it yeah yeah so the showmanship goes out the window as well and yeah. you're thinking, so how have you uh, how how early did you overcome that and how did you overcome uh, it I suppose that comes with experience confidence um and just being yeah like I said like with me like I've always had a always had a special connection to the people I don't care if I'm in Norway Germany mm -hmm. flipping mm -hmm other side of the world in Japan. Because like, he travels, I can, in, yeah, like, motherfucker. They can't understand you, but like I've got a guy that can't speak English in front of me, but he's chatting every lyric yeah. to me, or, you know, chatting yeah. my lyrics. I'm in yeah. a dressing room, and the guy cannot speak English, but he's chatting, or I'll give him the mic, because he's one of the local MCs, and he chats, he's chatting my lyrics, like he's actually biting my lyrics and my flows, but he, he can't speak English. Mm -hmm. This is weird to me. Like, that's why tone and pattern's important, because that's the jazz jazz aesthetic of yeah, drum and bass. Yeah. They may not know every single word, yeah, but, but they, they get the flow. Yeah, they get the flow, and they might know the, the, what a lyric or whatever, but but I think with me, it's confidence, because that that you're right, there is times when you're like, boy, like what? And then then it becomes natural. Not for Shabba Day, I cannot no, imagine that shit. Like, <laughs> like, it's not, it don't even sound like I'm, I'm too, but it's just, it does over a certain amount of time that professionally because you have to turn on this. Someone have to find their button to switch, but sometimes we can just turn it on. Like for me as well, like I know when it's work time, mm. and I know when it's you know there's time when I'm not at work. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? But it's when you got to turn it on when you're not at work. When you see a guy in a pub and he's like, "Oh, come on, make this a little mm. or That's when I'm like, you know what I mean? This is it, I, it's not that I can't do it, but I, I, that's my like when I'm out of my zone, mm. I can turn it on like that. Do you but, get that a lot? I'd be more embarrassed, yeah, if someone said to me in a room, like I was with my like my friends, and then I'd see someone and I'd be like, you know, because I get kind of like, I'm cool normally, like, but that's when I get at my point, like, where mm. I'm like, oh God, like, I can't it's, it's a bit it embarrassed now, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like not, because they're normally drunk as well, which it's, it's normally up. drunk or whatever it is, <laughs> but like, it'd just be at the, the time when you don't expect it, and mm. that's kind of just like, or you get you get to know someone and then you find out they're a fan mm. and they just start talking about your MCing and all yeah, that and you're yeah. just like oh god man like it's good I love it because I love my fans but there is times where he loves football as well we do yeah, football too we do you there's know what I mean? time and a place for everything <laughs> but you know what it's just it's just about being professional and you learn that over the mm. years and to know when you got to just be like it's like to say like you know don't drink before you go on stage or don't do this or because you know if you do that you don't know what's gonna happen yeah, it's your true. performance might as long as you perform well and the people are happy. That's one thing that's important to me, to see the people happy, mm. you know, promoters happy, then I'm happy, do you know what I mean? Because mm. we're there to entertain, so you have to remember that as an artist. There's times to party and you can, you know, go on stage and drink and get drunk and whatever, but there's other times where you got, you know, most of the time you got, you're, you're there to entertain, mm. so when people are at their bank holiday weekend, everyone's going out to have a party and whatever, you're there to entertain. Yeah, you're there working. There will be a time where you can have a little party or whatever, do what you're mm. doing, but you've got to keep it professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that That comes with what you're saying today because if you're not on point, then things can be a big challenge, mm. a big mountain to climb when the lights turn on or you've got to face the crowd and there's no music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then if it's just, if you're comfortable, you can just deal with it. Just in your zone, almost like that's zen. That's it. Zen that's shit, it, man. Just, just, just like... Because there is times where things do happen, like say someone passes out in the rave or they've yeah. got to call paramedics. You've got to be on point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, if you're drunk up and, and you can't, you ain't seeing the vision, do you get what I mean? It could, it could backfire on you, but 
yeah, I mean, along the way, I've seen things enough and, and I've learned enough to know that, yeah, confidence as well, like, you're in control and you're the mic, man. So there's times where the security, uh, you know, they've come in and roughed me up, do you know mm. what I mean? And I'm on the mic, they're locked off the rave and I'm like, listen, mate, we need to, we need to spread mm. a word yeah, to yeah. the people. Yeah. And then they say, they're like, and then the people start turning on them and then they're looking at me because that, mm. that, that happened recently about six months ago. Really? I was in a club and it was the COVID thing. And um, it was in lockdown and was doing something and the security got a big aggy. Wow. I think people was coming in and they didn't have whatever on and it was just getting a bit silly. And then, so I said to the guy, look, let me explain to the people, but they was trying to lock off the mic and mm. grab it off me. And I just said, look, and then oh, I gave him the mic and then the crowd turned on the security. <laughs> and I said, see what I'm saying? And I got back on the mic yeah. and I said, look, do it. And I said it and that saved the situation. Wow. And yeah. after I shook the man's hand and all that, it was a bit of heat at the moment. Yeah. We, had, we exchanged words and whatever. But, but you're the one in after, power. You managed to. I said yeah. to me, thank you, bruv. Like that just, and I said, it's simple, bruv. You can't yeah. treat people like that. Yeah. Everything's just. But yeah, things like that, you just learn along the way and you're just being on point is yeah. the main thing, bro. What's the craziest thing you've seen at a rave ever? Like, let's go back to the recesses. Let's go from the, let's go back oh, to the history. What's the craziest thing where you're like, this would never... Oh, right, the crazy, I've got it, I've go got on, it. Go like, straight away, so we're in, New, we're in Australia on tour and with Randall, I'm from Fantasy. Um, there's about five or six artists there. Skibs was there, a couple other people was there, so... We was in this rave on, um, in, on, in Australia, some girl put on this rave and it was like a festival, but it was like a, almost like a, they had like a circle going around, but the stairs going up, so people was on the stairs. Yeah. Anyway, so it was one yeah. of them, but we found out when we was there, the woman was like, oh, we're low on security tonight. So I was like, oh, I didn't think nothing, because it was good vibes. Got on the stage, um, ready to perform. Then all of a sudden, some madness happened, like this guy just come running on, he was like six foot eight. Found out after that he was he took an acid tablet or something like that. Right. Um, but anyway, this went on for hours. Like it went on. It was an eight-hour scene. Basically, original sin and taxman was on the decks. The guy jumped on the decks, put his foot through the decks. Yeah, no one could control him. He had like a mad turn. What? Then he grabbed it and then he punched. I think it was um, the promoter's missus and broke her jaw. But <gasps> in the rave on the stage, what was there? The police come, everyone, because they, they had no security. So no, at first, no one would cook and this guy. <gasps> Randall literally picked up a stick, like... And I remember, like, it was like the, the guy was swinging punches on the stage. It was like one of them was not. And then they, they had about five locals that grabbed him and held him down, sorry, held him down. And anyway, they was wrestling him on the floor, thinking, what's going on? The police come. Listen, mate, they couldn't even handle <laughs> him. They had to call another police uh, thing because his geezer was like a monster. Yeah. And he was just flinging things anyway. What? what happened in the end? They injected him. They put him in an ambulance. Tranquilizer. Yeah, they tranquilized him, bro. <laughs> Because he had a mad <laughs> turn and he still tried to run out the ambulance and all that, yeah, but he went on and the rave got locked off. There was actually a wedding going on, so we had to turn off the music for half an hour, yeah. And John B was on the decks and he was like, what's going on? I was like, I don't know. And then this geezer come on the stage. Anyone that was at that party would tell you that was the maddest thing that I've ever Comment below, seen. big up John B. That's fucking mad. That's crazy. They locked off the event after that. We didn't even get to play and then we were supposed to go to the after party, but the police took over the whole backstage and all the thing and... They was trying to get hold of this guy. And I, I still went there about five hours after and I was seeing the guy on the floor moving like still this. Still moving? He was, he was in handcuffs and he was still moving. like but this incredible kid, hulk shit. We found out days later that he took a, he had a bad turn, like a bad trip. Wow. Um, yeah, so that was the craziest thing i Surreal that there was a, a wedding going on at the same time. <laughs> it was crazy, brother. And that was in Australia. And I was just like, I had people come, good day, mate, shabbity, mate. Yeah. I was just like, what Bit is Bit jet lag. Yeah, like... <laughs> like um, and another time a woman wrapped the mic lead around her body when I was in Switzerland, like, I was MC and then she grabbed the lead and started wrapping it around her. Uh -huh. And I was like, what the hell? And I tried to take the lead and she's pulling the lead and I was pulling it and then the security come and took her out. But that was this crazy shit, do you know People what I mean? People just, they're, they, they're this, and I guess this comes yeah. with that frontal cortex music thing. I shit becomes lawless. Like they think they, yeah. they can do what they want. This guy, I mean, he was high or he was high on a trip and then this woman was definitely drunk. I mean, if you're under too much <laughs> of alcohol or anything you've took or whatever, you know what I mean? It's not a good look, mm. but um, most of the time it's them sort of situations that cause these sort of yeah. scenes, you know what I mean, <laughs> as they say. It's always intoxicants. Yeah, you know. Um, SASAS comes about. Yeah. Prior to this, however, you and Skibber were like two-headed monsters. Yeah. You guys were... Without question, the dynamic duo, yeah. the poster boys, I'd say, of not just not just drum and bass and jungle, but I, I would argue culture 
of its time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we put the work in before that, like I said, with the whole MC convention thing and from skipping up and down and um, going back and forward in, in my little journey. But yeah, the, the, like obviously we put that work in, like even with Shocking, so big up Shocking B, mm. because we, me and Shocking originally started SAS and then we linked up with Skibs and then we went on call yeah. and done Shocking Shabba. Yeah, Skibber. big up Shocking. Everyone knows like the history, mm. like, some people don't, but that was history. And then obviously me and Skibber was more iconic in the rave, Shocking when and started DJing. Mm. So we kind of like, you know, separated paths, but he said he gave us the blessing to mm. take the name and do all that thing. So that was a that was a journey. And then obviously picking it back up where promoters jumped on it, they started booking Shabba Skib before the SAS thing. And then we started to like re-light the name, as they mm. said, and work together more because we was always separate. Like people like, it was like Shabba on at his time and Skib and they mm. probably like, you know, keeping us apart for a little while because that was probably looked at as like, that was then and now's now. But mm. then we, yeah, we formed this SASAS thing and then I was rolling with Storming and obviously Skibs new shots. And uh, we both always worked with Steve anyway. And then like, you know, um, shots new Mackie. And then it was just a big concoction of, of of organic stuff that had come together. Because this, just... this was like early noise, wasn't it? This, yeah. This, the... this didn't just jump out of nowhere. And it the... was kind of too, yeah, too far. What we in now, too far. Well, it was like 2015, I think it started. So... So seven years going on eight years now. Crazy when you think it's about mad, it. Like, because it was just one event. But there's always there's like you ask Steve or if obviously Skibs and Storming ain't here. But if you if you ask anyone, everyone's got it. It's so funny because, um, like we always used to have joke about this, like who started it and how it come about. And even in the documentary, it was never like yeah. that. Was just the way they proje projected it. No disrespect, but I've got my view of the thing. And what's we, your view of this? My view of this whole <laughs> thing is obviously like well, without, no, like obviously we did like the, 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 we know that the main event was the bangers and mash party with the four S's on it. But before that, we did it. And Stormin even said to me, right, this is like the new Shabba, um, Stormin Shotter, it's like the new Shabba Skibba. And like the S's thing come about before that because we did a party at X-Man's 15th um, anniversary in Bristol. Mm, big up X-Man. And yeah. we got X-Man every time, do you know what I mean? One. And, and wow. we did that and then we, we kind of did a set where we jumped on together and then was like, yeah, and then the idea come from that, I think. And then the event was that event, the Bangers and Mash, where people stayed to the end. Mm. We did it, it went down so good. And we thought, rah, like we've created something here. Bangs we... and mash, that's another one. See, jeez, you've yeah. got just so much legacy. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, like, there's so there's, 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 there's a lot. You know, you've got the sticky thing. Like, I did that mm. for a long time. Like, I looked at, like, 12 years. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. eight, eight, nine years. That's Mad. Um, and I've got, kind of always kept things moving, like, with MC Convention, Highly Blessed and High Level, regenerated yeah. that yeah. as well. Got the music label back out. Got off the hook now. Yeah. Up to date, do you know what I mean? Crazy. So I always try to regenerate because yeah. even I sold my, I sold Sticky to someone that ate, you know what I mean? Like in lockdown, I kind of had the idea to do the fishing thing because obviously the fishing thing, I've always loved fishing. Mm -hmm. And even now, next year, so look out next year, we've got something big coming with, with Rodsville's and bass. And I've, I wanted to do yeah. it this year, but I couldn't do it physically mm. and mentally. And even with my time, I just couldn't do it. Like I had, after lockdown, I had to get on my feet and mm. get back to music and, yeah, and yeah. do that what Push I know. It. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, obviously the fishing thing in lockdown went through the roof. Yeah, of course, because you're tired. Social yeah. distance and everything yeah. is safe to do. So yeah. like, it, then I had no music to do. So I was like, right, all attention yeah. on that. And then I've had to balance it and look for that balance, like we were mm. saying earlier. So next year we're, we're planning to do something massive for that. I've got some big people on board and... I can't wait because I love that. I'm excited mm. for that. Like a kid, like I go camping. I do. I love it. I love yeah. fishing. It's just so such a good balance of what I do with my music. Um, and there's a lot of people into drum and bass, and there's a market for that drum and bass and fishing. So that's why I've seen for sure. a gap in the market. Yeah. Um, to do something later on in life as well, something I can always do, and enjoy doing. So. It's like music to me. Is it's not a game. You can't complete it. Mm. You know, you just people gotta... just yeah, it's a, yeah. It's, it's like <coughs> a constant me. game, evolving chess yeah. game that you have good days, bad there's days. Always and, new. Yeah, there's right. always new um, yeah. like levels to complete, and you can never complete it. Like music, you can never complete it because no, no, there's no. always a different program or a different thing to learn, and you can learn stuff, but there's always new things coming out, and that's what makes it beautiful. And like with fishing, is like that as well. They've got new rigs. They've got new ways of catching fish. New lakes. New you know, new bite alarms, new this, new rods, new yeah. things, new methods. So it's just always, you know, and then... It's the same with graph. It's the same with graffiti. Yeah, it's the same with skateboarding. I yeah. Anything that's got, like, this extra outdoor pursuit to it. Yeah. If you apply anything creative to anything, yeah. it's just, it's fun. It just yeah. should be fun. 
So in so going into lockdown, I, I changed my life a little bit up and like started doing some some spiritual healing and um, do you know what I mean? My missus is into that like a lot. Do you know what I mean? Reiki and things like that. So I've been doing that and going to gong sessions and I got a few people into it as it goes. Wow! And it's like really like calming and yeah, it's just helped me so much. Like it opens you to the universe and does certain things in your life and. You know, it's about confidence and, and knowing where you're going and what you're going to do and, and, and it will pay you back with that. So we've been working on that and, and doing that and I love, like, my missus loves it and we love it and I'm into it now. It's like meditation and even just for an hour, like, it it just changes your day and your week and it just does so good mm. for you. So I've been doing a lot of that and... Um, do, and do, you, do, you, do you always think you... I mean, this is quite a wide question because you, you can't always think back to the time, yeah. but when you're dealing with opportunist moments and things coming your way, some yeah. good, some bad, and yeah. there is a spiritual guidance there, isn't there? So have you always been in that mindset? Have you? Yeah, I've always believe, believed in, like, I kind of my inner self, and there's more than just, like, everyone says, yeah, God and this and that. There is the universe, and, like, you know what I mean? It's like what you put out there, you will get back, and there's, there's ways of dealing with it, and there's it's a whole big thing. Like it's like a game; you can't complete it. Man. You can just, you just, it just does good for you. Like mm. people, some people just take the myth and say, "Oh, there's nothing there," and like these little crystals either they, and above there's things that can give you energy, and mm. there's a third eye. Do you get me? And there's no loads. Of, I'm not deep into it, like I'm religious or this and that. But when I, I it is something that's become a part of my life mm. and our life. And it's helped me so much because calming situations, like five years ago, if this mm. situation would have happened, I would have dealt with it so different. Mm. Not, I'm just saying, giving an example, and then mm. this situation comes up and it's, you just look at things in different ways. And I suppose that we all, we've all got a heart and we all, we all mm. feel certain things, do you know what I mean? Mm. And then the stress of life and the music life and the, in the far circle of it, and it's so balancing, do you know what I mean? It's like fishing, like I went fishing on Monday and I caught one fish, um, but it was wicked. Twenty four hours camped out. Do you know what I mean? I was. I my, love my, that you love it. I, I just fucking it. love you. I love it, it bro. I so <laughs> love it. Like I'm buzz. When I say I'm going fishing, I'm like a kid. Like you know, mm. just going camping at school. Like I love it, and and that's what it is. And if you'd have told me ten years ago that I would have had a guy standing over me doing some mad healing like this and 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 knocking me out like with his hand mm. and sh and you know I would have been like yeah all right mate. Yeah, but yeah. I tell you what, there's there's things you can learn and your body heals with this music, um, with the healing of, like, the gong. Yeah, yeah, It's, like, yeah. musical healing. And For it's, real. like, you know, it does certain things to you. Like, you could close your eyes and imagine you're on a beach and then you just start thinking things and then what? it's all about positive thinking. That's all it is. Like, there's no time for negativity. Uh, and then negative thoughts always come through our heads and, oh, I'm going to do this. Or what about if this bit, you know, a little bit of anxiety? Fear. And it's, yeah, it's like that. So if you can just overcome that and just be, like, you're confident in what you do no matter what, you doing as long as you're doing the right thing mm. and 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 you're confident in what you're doing and confidence is a big thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like uh, yeah. it's the knowing and like you know what I mean. There's 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 thinking. Thinking's a lot, mm. but knowing is everything. Oh, do you know what I mean? See, as they say, you're saying, don't yeah. Give it to your own podcast. And I'm not like deep in it, like I'm gonna try and convert. But I've got a few people on this thing here, and people phone me out. I said, you know what, bro? <laughs> that is all right, you know. Mm. And they take their misses or whatever, and they do their thing, and it's different. Like, Comes it's a thing for them. Fight. Like there's yeah. there's all that, but it's so clean, yeah. and the energy is just pure. People that are there are just great, and it's, that's what I want to surround myself with, man. Um. Did this, did this as a period in your life help for such, you know, huge moments of change? Yeah. Like Skibber's passing. Yeah. Was this a real healing process? Yeah, that... I think, like, like, Skibber's thing was a shock. Like, storming, we kind of, we knew he had cancer and we knew that, like, we w was watching him fight it and, you know, I was with him every day and, like, you know, it was just like a thing where it grew and it was just like, oh, no, like, mm. you know, when he told us he, there was nothing they could do, that was a mm. sad moment. But it was a build up, and it was even when he passed, that was like a. Because I lost my nan around the same time as well. Like, my oh, nan. Rest got, in peace. Well, yeah. yeah, rest in peace, nan. And she got, she got ill uh, within six months. It took her, do you know what I mean? And that was, a, that was the first time I experienced death since my granddad, like back when I was a kid. Mm. So, like, yeah, that was like a thing where I was like, oh, and I love my nan, do you know what I mean? I loved mm. her deeply. So it was like, that was hard. And then I lost my best mate six months after. So, in, mm. in the space of a, a little time, and then. That's how I come together with my girl, because she lost her mum as well. She lost her dad when she was younger. So we experienced mm. similar things. Mm. 
Um, do you know what I mean? And we, we, yeah, it, it, it does. It does help you get through certain things. Like with the Skibs thing was a big shot. I felt like I got hit by a bus. I still do, but I kind of got up from it now a little mm. bit um, and faced reality because life goes on no matter what. So mm. you can stay in the ruck. And of course I miss him that deep. I miss our conversation. I miss being on road with him. I, can't, I still can't, I ain't sunk in properly yet. But mm. at the time I was just... I felt literally like I was run over. Mm. Um, and, you know, I had, to, I had to use that, channel that energy into what I was doing to, to carry this flag forward. Yeah. And that kept me going at the time. But I had a lot of Reiki and I have acupuncture as well. That's very good. Like acupuncture is fucking great, great. Like I, I love that month. shit. Like, like my missus does it once a week, but I have it once yeah. a month. And it's like, you know what, it's, it helps you, man. It What's the cupping a, one as well? There's the cupping as the well. Cupping. Yeah, I haven't tried that, you know. Yeah, Someone said to me, get on that, you know. I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I had some next one where they do some, some woman comes and she does some stroke into your feet. And it's mad, yeah. bruv. Like, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm like, no, no, no one touched my feet. No, my thank you. Had it. And she goes, no, you should try it. And she touched my feet for five minutes. I fell asleep, bruv. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. I was, it was bright and it was like three o'clock in the afternoon and I was passed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's different things that can help you relax as well, that help you do what you do in, mm. this, in this crazy world and this, you know, this mad... Unpredictable you know, world. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's like... Um, you know, like in this cri like the music circle is always very fast and you're traveling, touring, mm. doing all that. So it's a good balance and mm. massages and all that, man. You've got to do that. Like before, you just say, oh, they, mm. boy, I ain't bothering with that. Like when you're younger, I suppose when you get older, you know, you start, it takes longer to recover. So if mm. I have a drink or everything, mm -hmm. nah, like it takes me two, three days to recover. So I don't bother. <laughs> and once again, rest in peace, Gibbs. Yeah, rest, rest in, in peace, peace Gibbs, um, man. And yeah, Storming as well. Always be remembered. Absolutely, Storming as well. Rest in peace. Stevie Hyper as well. And Stevie yeah, yeah, Hyper. Um, do you think, in retrospect, we're only, you know, we're fans first. When, when we get into music, we look at our role models, our peers, the people, and we just want to be them. But yeah. as we get older into the scheme of things, and like you say, Reiki, spiritual yeah. spiritual awakenings that, that help you progress. Yeah. These, aren't, these aren't the, the, the less likely things that the average you know punk rock and roller would be no, dousing themselves no. with Jack Daniels. Yeah, people hear this, they're going to think, what is going <laughs> on? But, but you do, know you what? Think, do you think there is this change of heart? I think nowadays, especially coming into 2020 pluses, yeah. you know, the raves are different. The mindsets are different. Yeah, I yeah, think we've yeah. got to kind of people, step up a bit, yeah, we? People have moved on. And we said it the other day, like we was talking about the way that the errors change about people raving. Like mm. they go out, they go out in a day now in a festival they can get a ticket for and see 10 of their favourite artists, you know, rave all day, get smashed and come back at 10 o'clock and be in bed and then, or whatever, and then be up in the morning to go work or school. Like when you're, that sounds when you're, fucking great. Yeah, when you're <laughs> when you're clubbing all night and you're doing it all night yeah. and you're coming at six, seven in the morning, that's the day gone. And yeah. if, you, if you do stay up, your day's messed. Let's let's be real. Like you mm. you ain't gonna be on a normal level if you go out partying the night before. Sometimes so, two days. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So, um, like the festival, the way that the kids are thinking is different. They, they like they don't like one music. They like all different. So mm. that's why these festivals are great and it's gone up thirty three percent, like since lockdown. Do you know what I mean? That's thirty three percent in yeah. people going out not going to clubs and going to festivals. So it's like, mm. it is suffering a little bit, the club scene, but it will come back around at the moment. Who really wants to stand in a sweaty club all night when mm. they can go out in a festival with their mates in the day? That's and that's true. just, that's the mentality. It's not what I'm saying, but it's kind of like the reality of it. And the police yeah. as well, like they don't want people running around at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. They'd rather deal with everything. And then it's, it's easier for everybody. No residential noise. Mm. You know, there's loads of things people don't see, but... Um, it's changing. Everything's yeah. changing. You've got to move with that. Ebbs you know and mean? flows. Yeah, yeah, 100%. What's the future for SASES? Future for SASES, obviously, we, when we lost Storming, uh, we carried that through, um, which was a big, massive loss. And then Skibs, obviously, is massive. So we've got, you know, I've always been about the MCs, bro. Like you said, that's why I'm here and that's what I do what I'm doing. So, and I'm always generating and coming up with a, the idea, man, like... I've always been great at ideas and I've found out I'm a manifester. I'm a master manifester. That's what I am, yeah, like with ideas. Yeah. There you so go. It just flourishes, the ideas, but I'm not an executor. I'm not a great executor. So my missus is an executor and I roll with executors as well. So when I come up with ideas, I've got someone to help me execute the ideas. I'm not like a murderer or nothing like that, you know what I mean? No, but, but he's the executor. When it comes to that, yeah, like you have to, like I can execute certain, but... That's not my great feel. My great is uh, I'm a manifester and I come with ideas and they flourish always. So I've always got ideas and I've always had an idea to do what I want to do. So for the next SAS chapter, you'll see what's going on. We're bringing some MCs out and we're working on the future. 
And you new know, MCs? Yeah, like new MCs we're working with at the moment. We've got like uh, Wiser, we've got um, Inner, we've got Westman, we've got Endo, bringing out some old older names as well, like, you know, classic artists, uh, past, present and future we're working on. Wow. But we're concentrating on the future. And it's been really good. If you look on the SAS socials, we've been popping up some videos of man, uh, them not doing some remix Shabba bars and remix Shotter bars. And we're carrying the legacy through because obviously Skib's in lockdown. He, his thing was bringing through the DJs and the younger generation. So mm. we're spicing up the set a little bit and we're, we're bringing through what I thought was the best MCs uh, now mm. that's coming mm. with potential who ain't really been locked down or... Yeah doing their own thing, do you know what I mean? And they're kind of, everyone's doing their own thing individually, but we're kind of spicing up the group and making it, we're, we've got a brand and we're making it, we're still smashing up raves, like we've been carrying it. It's been, you know, two, me and Shot have been doing it and obviously we carry skibs with, with us as the well. Energies, do you know what I mean? The energies, yeah. the, the hooks, the bars, you know what I mean? And then we've got this side of it now what we're working on and yeah, it's, it's, it's bright, it's bright things, man, always. Like there's never going to be, there's always going to be moments where you think, oh no, what am I going to do? But I've kind of got my high level thing going on as well. I've got the fishing thing, and I've got the shabba thing, I've got the SAS. Yeah, the thing. high level thing's so, crazy as well. Yeah, bro. so I mean, I've just... got some new artists with them. We've got loads of new music coming, and producers coming through, and mm. we're just trying to get that platform at the moment and really put that time into build that platform. But the flat platform's created, and it's all about what we want to do. And right now, to be fair, like with with me moving house and doing all that, I've just been kind of have to balance my career. So I've had to put a little stall for two or three months to take care of what I need to take care of. Mm. And then I'll be back to work grinding every day again and then back on my music. Like, we released three EPs in, like, I think, like, six months. So. Yeah, no, well, no, yeah, no, you can, sniffed about, That's what I'm right? saying. So it's just about getting the right reach. And, yeah. you know, the music thing's a whole game. You've got to challenge yourself. Like you said, it's not a game. So it's like you've got yeah. to find the right people in the right departments to help you out in the right places, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and that's the back end that, that people time. never see, yeah. That takes time and, you know, you could, you could, be, you could be working around people that's got them links, but mm. you just don't even know because if you don't ask, you don't get. That's right. So you have like to be, you, your receptors have to be on. you need help. Like, as yeah, big man. artists, like, I phone people and I say, listen, I need a little bit of help here. And, and the ones who help, you get what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, if you don't ask, the people ain't going to do it. Energy, get energy, on. energy. And yeah. there's a lot of that going on in the scene. Like, it's just like, you know, blind and they don't, they don't want to see you doing things. A lot of people, do you know what I mean? So it's kind of... You have to, you have to ring bells and you know shout from the, the mm. you know the treetops. It's all a game. Yeah. It's all a game, it's man. All a, but be heard. Whatever way you're gonna get heard, get heard. So if you're up and coming MC, or you're up and coming DJ, mm. like, just keep on what you're doing. Just keep pushing because mm. you're gonna come across that right person, mm. or that right link, and then that link there will take you to another link which opens doors. And that's how it goes in this game. It's not what you know; it's who you know. Yeah. So it's the Mario just keep effect. that in your mind, and yeah. you'll be you'll be blessed. You know what I mean, like I said, nothing's easy. Everything's a struggle. Like even you see. I'm striving every day. We're working, grinding, like nothing. And set often, out. if you make it look easy, it normally means that there's a lot of work behind yeah, the I'll, scenes. Come on, man. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's there's so much, and the travelling and the touring, and mm. it, people just see us at raves and they see us maybe pop up on a video, but it's all the getting to and coming from and making sure you're punctual and you're on you're on point. That's that's the big part of the game. So, bro, you're cited by. Everyone from Corrupt FM to DJ Target, yeah, yeah. you know, the whole grime scene tips their hat to the likes of you, Debt, Big Up Get Debt, yeah, Skibba. They, they give, out, they give man their flowers, like us our flowers, and I've got a lot of love for them guys because, you know, I'll be honest with you, like, I've worked in Drum and Bass Jungle, like, all my life, uh, most of my career, and it's like the people from other scenes back then were showing me more love, and I'm not going to lie, like, anyway, back then it did hurt me, but the, the scene's changed now, and there's a lot of new producers, mm. and there's a lot of new faces, and there's good vibes. I'm not saying there weren't good vibes back then, but it's it, the amount of love they've shown me the whole way through the Heartlesses, and all mm. these guys, you know what I mean? And it's just been like, it's like a family, so... And I'm not saying that, like, people in my own scene didn't support, because... No, no, uh, yeah. you're making I'm sense. I'm just saying, like, sense. for me, like, yeah, it was like... Back then, I used to get walking them raves and get treated like royalty, bruv. Mm. Not that I didn't in drum and bass, but certain places were up and down. But in them sort of raves, even now, like I do them parties and the Goes response off. I get and the old school people, then it's just bringing back their memories and mm. getting people in their era. Do you know what I mean? And did you ever time. think it when you was in early night? No, nah. did you ever think when you was younger? No, nah, like because I'm one of the ones that have just been like kind of longevity in it, and mm. I've gone through like there's people. I can't even tell you, like, when I started on Russia FM and all that, like, there's not many people about right now mm. just doing this music thing. So mm. I've kind of grown with it as a baby and I love doing what I do and I just I just keep on doing it, man. Like, like, like I said, I regenerate myself all the time. I don't want to be 
stuck in one bracket or one, one. You know, he's he's this. He's an old school MC. Or he's this. I like to keep my foot in every door and 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 I hope that I can do that good. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then that they've got a lot more music to come from me solo as well. Like. I, I'm working on that as well. I've got a lot, lot of bangers to come, man. Some commercial music and wow. different, different things. We want to take it to a different place, mm. and you know, you need to have all the right artillery to do that. So I think, I think, I think public want assurances. They want a sign of quality and yeah. and and trust. Trust as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's they, what... they start trusting into you, and then they they buy into you, and that's what it, this game is like. That. That's why I love my fans because my fans are the lowest fans ever. Mm. I could see them, and they can move on. Johnny was have five kids, or yeah, go yeah. on and you know do this and do that, but they still recognize and they still support. The old school ones don't really buy records, but they come and support you. But the new generation learn from the old school, so it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and you see the re <laughs> and then I got fans coming up to me that are into jungle, and it's like, mm. oh, I was listening to Tate Man from night. See, I wasn't even born, bro, and this and that, and then it, you hear that. That that vibe there, it's like you know that's that's good for me because it, it grows and it's more the money know, that it's yeah, more the money that's, that's that's what I mean. It's means more, done... yeah, like it's good to go out and get bookings and and, and you know make dough and do all that and, and be able to do do what you do. Love to, you know, get on, you know, like in life, like if something I love doing and I'm I'm doing it. Do you know what I mean? And I'm grateful for that. But there's that side of it as well. The mm. love, got to show love. And I've always been one of them guys. I've always got time for my fans. I'm never like. Don't get me wrong, when you've got like 10 man chatting mm -hmm. in your ear in, in the smoking arena, and there is times where it can be a little bit like, because I'm the sort of person who I am, people like to pull me, mm. they like to pull me and like to push me, like mm. not push me like that, but to grab me, like, because I'm like that. They're, sort of, they're hands like, on because oh, they love. Like, cause it's the love. Yeah, the yeah. COVID, it's just love, but yeah, in the COVID you. thing, change a little thing, like, you know, like you got to be careful of, you know, people coming and, you know, people were carrying bugs and shit. Like, I caught COVID like six months, uh, two months ago. Wow. And I was in the rave and, and I was Which is right. why you didn't show up here as well. Yeah, That's like another one, you, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I had yeah. COVID and I had it for about six weeks. It wasn't as bad as the mm. first time I had it, but mm. when I had it, it was like, it was probably because I caught it from a rave, a fan coming up to me or whatever. Someone yeah. just, but they don't realise and no. it, they don't mean no harm, but it has changed a little thing like that. You have to, you have to really, mm. I don't really wear masks as well. So it's like, it's one of them ones for me. Like I kind of get intimate and close to the fans, but I'm not going to be like, after, since COVID, I've been like, ooh. Come on, man. Fever the festivals. It's all open air. No problems. Yeah, Daytime. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm the promoting guy for the festivals, man. Just get me on there. No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jen, it's been a fucking pleasure. Yeah, no, thanks Shabba, for having man. me, man. We, we finally we did it. I hope we covered everything. Do you, know do you what mean? feel like we covered everything? We covered a lot. I, I felt like I've just talked the whole way, but it's cool. I'll probably, like, as long as it we ain't been... We lapped that up in yeah. droves nah, over I on the podcast. Listen, I appreciate man. it. And like, like I said, I've been watching your thing, what you're doing. It's great. Um, big up the supporters and all the fans that are supporting you, man. Do you oh, know what big mean? respect, my brother. Every time, Honestly. man. My guy, Shabadi. Here we go again. Killer Killer Podcast. Out, out, in was out of fashion. You know what we're doing? Street culture around here, all right? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? Um, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? You stay lucky, people. Thanks, Shabba. Yes, Legend. big up, man. Enough respect. Peace. Peace. Peace.